I saw recently that 18 Republicans were against um, uh, revoking the IRA, which uh, none of them voted for the first time around. But I guess uh, some of them are starting to see the benefits to their district or maybe seeing that this is an issue that that uh, suburban voters in moderate districts are are okay with or like and and that they're not going to to uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. The private sector in just two years has made hundreds of billions of dollars of new investments around the country. Members of Congress see that investment happening. Turns out that the majority of that investment has actually happened in Republican areas, in red, red states and districts. And so it's just good economic policy. And I think that... Um, I predicted it when it passed that I think it would be such good economic and energy policy as well as climate policy that it would never be repealed. And I still don't think it'll be repealed. I just don't think there will be the votes, uh, certainly not among Democrats, but but among most Republicans to do it, too. The other thing is we have uh, had in tax incentives for clean energy for a long time and they have usually been bipartisan. It's really only in the Trump era that it's become so partisan. Again, Trump just wants political issues, culture war issues. That's his whole strategy, is to create an us versus them grievance politics. And the thing I really like about Kamala Harris's campaign is she's made it future-oriented, positive about what America can do, not about blaming each other. And I actually think she's going to be able to turn the tables on him. I think he's going to look, as he <coughs> increasingly has, um, someone who blames everyone else for, for his problems. Well, just uh, a fascinating kind of turn of events over the last couple of years is how Elon Musk has gone from kind of uh, maybe a little bit left of center to now being right of center to maybe being far right of center. Uh, and and now Trump partnering up with him, which is also fascinating because, uh, you know, Musk has made his fortune, fortune building electric cars. And Trump has basically said that he's going to kill the electric car. So what do you make of this uh, craziness? Who knows? I mean, first of all, anyone who thinks they can tell what Trump is lying about, what he's telling the truth about is should 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 really be betting the stock market and making a fortune, because I don't think even Trump knows the answer to those questions. I mean, he lies so constantly that he's not even sure of what he thinks on individual issues. And Elon Musk himself is an opportunist, right? I mean, the fact that he, um, that Biden and Harris had put in fact the, in place the largest incentives for electric vehicles in, in global history, and then he's turned against them, it just shows that all he's interested in doing is solidifying his, you know, trillionaire positions on a variety of issues with the U.S. government, in particular one issue. Right now, SpaceX, um, Elon Musk's company uh, that controls the majority of U.S. satellite launches, including our national security-related satellite launches. Unfortunately, we have privatized a lot of that work away from NASA into the private sector. And Musk has those contracts. First of all, it's just bad policy that he was ever allowed to have a majority of uh, satellite launches that any one person would be. But I think Musk's play is that he wants to have Trump owing him and to sort of have a hegemony uh, position as a company, SpaceX, on, on, on satellites uh, and other things uh, that are in, in his business interests. So I think, as usual, Elon Musk can't be counted on as a true friend of the climate. It's it's obvious that he is really more interested in just his business. And the, the funny thing is that any good that Elon Musk did with Tesla will be far outweighed if Trump becomes president. I mean, Trump is going to attempt to underturn, overturn every regulation on greenhouse gas emissions we have. He did this the first time. 
and don't take my word for it. He says that's what he's going to do. He's going to withdraw us from the Paris Climate Agreement. This happened last time he was president. He undermined global climate momentum just when we need it. Because here's the thing, Matt, we are much closer to really bad climate problems than most anybody in American politics wants to realize. And so Elon Musk endorsing Trump is the worst single thing he could have done for the climate. Well, I think, uh, yeah, the list of things that uh, distinguish Harris from Trump, uh, one of them ending the National Ocean uh, Oceanographic uh, Administration uh, is is certainly on the top of my list that, as far uh, as- That's right. I mean, meaning. the work that I worked with NOAA when I was in the White House for several years, these are the leading scientists in the world who are giving us real-time information on what's actually happening in the climate. I mean, it's incredibly important to businesses, to local communities, to weather planning, to everything. And he wants to eliminate it. it, it it's insane. It, it's just, it's ideological madness, far right wing ideology gone crazy and berserk. And um, it, it's incredibly dangerous. And there are other ways that Trump will be very dangerous on climate that we can talk about. But I, I really think that it's increasingly going to be a voting issue in this election because the choice is so stark and because Harris is wisely appealing directly to younger voters who really do care about climate change. Polls have shown that voters under 40 increasingly are willing to vote specifically on climate change. And I think she's done a brilliant job in reaching directly out to those voters and talking about climate as a key issue to our future.